Hi guys, welcome back. I am RedZ and today I am so excited to bring you another RAS version 0.6 preview of Bithynia. Yes, Bithynia. And this roster is really, really cool. A mixture of Thracian and Greek elements to bring together a pretty brutal, a pretty strong and a pretty scary roster Overall, a very, very nice roster indeed. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, guys, that would be really appreciated. We're on the way to 3,000 subscribers. We've just passed 2,300. So thank you all for the continued support on the channel. And before we get going with the roster, guys, we're also going to have our history from Mouse Loss as well of the roster. So you guys know exactly why this roster has been built this way and where these units come from. So without further ado, let's talk about the history. So the Kingdom of Bithynia emerged in what was originally a bit of a backwater area in the hinterland of the Straits of Bosporus. When independent rule was established there in the 4th century BC, the Persians simply ignored the development of it. And when a general was sent to subdue the area by Alexander, they were repulsed. The Macedonians then didn't bother to try again to take the area. In 270 BC, Bithynia is ruled by King Nicomedes, who established the so-called Northern League a few years early, earlier to resist the Seleucid expansion. You can check out whether they resist my Seleucid expansion in my RAS Seleucid campaign as well. Nicomedes forged this alliance with the neighboring Greek cities Chios, Byzantium, and Heraclea to hire a force of Celtic mercenaries and bring them to Asia. These would become known as the Galatians and ravage the Seleucid cities in Anatolia for years to come. Nicomedes followed up on his efforts by founding a new capital named after himself, Nicomedia, and consolidating his kingdom. And Bithynia remained an important and often expansive actor in the region until the mid-1st century BC. The region of Bithynia was mainly settled by Thracians, who had migrated from Tynia in Europe, a Thracian territory west of Byzantium. Therefore, its troops reflect this Thracian component with the famous Romphia bearers, Thracian peltas, a Thracian guard, and a select force of Procromoi, which was the bravest of the peltasts, available to a Bithynian general. To this light infantry comes the versatile, shielded Bithynian cavalry and their fast-moving Hippocontistae. A second part of the army is made up of Greeks from the increasing number of cities in Bithynia such as Nicomedia who initially fought as Hoplites. After several mil military reforms, the Bithynian army introduced the Roperoi, heavily armoured Epibartai marines and a royal Peltas regiment after the role model of the Antigonid Menace. One of the main characteristics are the Bithynian helmets, which are not used by anyone else. And I will point them out when we see them, guys, because they are pretty cool indeed. One of the helmets that you're not going to see in any other rosters unless you're getting Bithynian mercenaries or AOR regiments somehow. But a really, really cool roster. I've already gone through this roster and it is, it's one of the most exciting ones uh, that they have brought for this new update. It is really, really exciting but first things first let's go through the missile boyos the acontistai over here we've seen them many times before our javi boys six morale six melee nine missile attack with seven javis and 12 total defense only one of which is armor remember so they will die to missiles very quickly and they are wearing that bit of armor on their heads their sun hats there uh, protecting them from the sun and from the weakest of arrows, <laughs> particularly. But yeah, your standard missile unit, you're going you're gonna to have a couple of these at the early game. You know, I wouldn't use them extensively unless you're really into Javi units. But let's look at our Greek Peltas, part of the Greek contingent of Bithynia. These guys look fantastic, as usual, as all the units do. And again, we've got the nice new designs on the shields. The unique designs for every faction are so cool, uh, indeed. So in terms of their, their stats, 12 morale, which is great. 10 melee attack, which is fine with a sword as well. Total defense of 23 and a missile attack of 9 with the 7 javelins 
once again. A completely fine unit. Gonna do well in melee. We've seen them in a couple of the custom battles. That they will actually hold the line against much more elite troops for quite a while. And give you a lot of time if you have to get them in melee. So, you can use these guys in melee. Obviously, try and avoid it to start with. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, try and avoid it to start with. But once they get into the melee, they're actually going to stand up quite well. And with that 12 morale, they're going to be resistant to a lot of morale shocks as well. So on to the Thracian Peltas guys. And the real key thing with these guys, apart from the fact that they look absolutely fantastic. Look at these guys and the little clasps. Again, the little details on here. Look at those tiny little clasps on the coat, uh, on the... Uh, the cloaks there looking fantastic. And I love the look of all these shields with the faces on. Very cool indeed. But these guys are a little bit different from your Greek Peltas in a, in a couple of ways. First of all, they've got a bit better morale. But they've got worse defense. And that comes from a lack of um, defense skill and one less armor as well. You can see the Greek Peltas have a huge 18 defense skill, which is pretty good for a non-melee unit. And the Thracian Peltas only have 30. But instead of the 9 missile attack, these guys actually have 11 missile attack and a 12 melee attack as well. But the main thing is this armor-piercing secondary weapon. If we have a look at these guys, you can see their description over here as well. So that armor-piercing secondary weapon, I believe it refers to the javelin. Uh, because they can do melee as their primary weapon. I know that it says they're a missile unit. So maybe it is their secondary weapon of the sword. Someone will have to let me know. But whichever it is, th that makes this unit so good. Really good. There's not a huge amount of armor piercing in RIS. And the units that are armor piercing are so valuable. This unit is going to be really, really nice. So these guys are going to stand up in melee or in javelins for such a long time. They're going to be a fantastic unit. And if you really like those hybrid style units, this is is really a faction for you because we've got another couple coming up as well so very very nice unit there really fantastic and they look absolutely stunning as well our first sort of look at the thracian style unit that they've designed here and oh my god it just looks fantastic so let's talk about some of the post reform units for the thracians over here so we have the epibate but we have the bithynian Proc uh, Promacoi, which we talked about in the history. Some of the Greek settlers over here in the Bithynian army. Very nice indeed. Fighting in the Greek style, but we do still have the Thracian cloaks and helms in here as well. Do we have any Bithynian helmets? Not quite, not quite yet. We've not quite got to that point, but we shall see them later on. But if we have a look at these guys, these guys are a different version of the Thracian Peltas, but you can see they're just like the Greek, uh, the Greek Peltas. They're really good in melee, 25 defense for a missile unit, should I say, and 11 melee attack with 14 morale and 11 missile attack. So really, what you want to do is kind of balance between these two if you are going for Java units, because both of these are going to be really good, and they're both going to be able to stand up in melee for quite some time. That 14 morale for a missile unit is fantastic. So they're going to do really well in a lot of cases. And again, the shields looking very nice indeed. And the small details just, again, look absolutely beautiful, don't they? What a glorious, glorious unit. But the Pro Promokoi, yeah, a decent unit. So you're going to have to kind of choose between these two. The Promokoi are kind of a, uh, a better version of the Greek Peltas, which are already a great unit, as you can see. But... The difference between these two, the armor piercing, is a big difference. So you really want to just take it dependent on the armor of the enemy that you're facing. So make sure you check whether you're facing... If you're facing a non-really heavily armored unit, then this, this guy's going to be better. If you're facing some heavy armored unit, then the Thracian Peltas are going to be for you. And now we have the Bithynian Epibartai. The Marines. Very nice indeed. Look at some of these shields. They are fantastic. They are stunning. They are glorious, should I say. <laughs> they are so good. Really, really nice. And completely unique designs, you know, uh, in here again that we see. The, just the amount 
of variance and, uh, you know, difference in a lot of these units. Like, look at this. We've never seen these before. Completely new type of uh, robe there that they're wearing, which is really cool indeed. But the Epibartai, they're pretty much your only long-range missile option in the whole roster. So you are going to want to get these eventually and get them into your armies. And here we have our first Bithynian helmets. There we are. There, That is the Bithynian helmet style, the Bronze Age style. Looking very nice. So that is the unique helmet that you get with these boys, I believe, uh, from doing my research. Uh, yeah, that is a really cool style. Very domed, as you can see. Makes your head look very long and huge, like you've got an alien head. But very cool, <laughs> nonetheless. But these guys are really, really, really good. <laughs> really good. They are fantastic. They are in a superb, superb hybrid unit, guys. They are brilliant. 14 morale. Really good to start with. 11 melee attack, which is great with a sword, which you can see is their secondary uh, weapon there. They have a sword. 8 missile attack for a slinger is fantastic again. 31 ammo, oh sorry, 32 ammo with a missile range of 140 and 27 defense. For a missile unit, that is quite obscene. That is quite ridiculous really. 27 defense, 6 armor, 15 defense skill and 6 shield. So they shouldn't die to missiles very quickly at all either. And they're going to stick in that melee just as long as probably... You know, close to as long as a Hoplite or a Theropora unit. That is how good these guys are. Really, really nice. I absolutely love these guys indeed. They are fantastic. And probably the best Epibartai unit we have seen so far. And one of the best hybrid units we have seen so far as well. Very, very cool. I love the look of these boys. They are fantastic. Sorry, I'm going to I'm gonna stop swooning over the Epibartai because I've swooned, swooned over a lot of Epibartai so far <laughs> in the unit roster. So let's move on to the infantry. So let's have a look at the Bithynian Hoplites. And these guys are actually not like many of the other, other Hoplites in the fact that you have to have a bit of a larger city uh, to recruit these guys or some more advanced barracks. Normally the Hoplites come in your first couple of levels of barracks. But for these guys, I think it's the third or fourth level. So, you know, you need a bigger city to get these guys because that's to represent, you know, these guys are the Greek soldiers coming into the army of the, the mainly predominantly Thracian, you know, nation. Very cool. Indeed. 36 defense, 13 morale, and 13 melee attack. Pretty much the same stats as nearly other type of Hoplite. But again, we've got the Bithynian helmets coming in. So that gives them a bit of extra difference in terms of the look. And again, the different new unique styles on the shield. God, this, this mod just looks so beautiful, doesn't it? Just look down there for a second. How good do these units look on such an old engine? It is absolutely unbelievable what they've managed to do. And again, the little details, I've just noticed that on the shield. That is something that you just don't need to see. It doesn't need to be there. Who's going to zoom in to look at that apart from me? But it's there nonetheless. That is the level of detail they have gone into with these units. But like I say, a standard Hoplite unit. So, you know... If you are using the Thracian tribesmen early on and you want to get some Hoplites, these are the guys you should probably replace your Thracian tribesmen with. If you can recruit them, of course, because they are a couple of levels up. So what we also have now is our Bithynian Romphaeophoroi. Yes, Romphaeophoroi. Yes, I don't know why that was almost an Italian accent then. <laughs> but let's have a look at these boys. Oh, glorious, yes. We have capage, guys, and we have the best capage we have seen so far. I love, I love this Thracian pattern. I think it's so cool. And it just adds, you know, an extra visual element to these boys compared to some of the Greek ones that just have one color or two colors on the, on the cloak. These Thracian boys with their patterns looking very nice indeed. But this is genuinely one of your strongest units and it might not look like it is a, um, you know, it might not look like it's going to be your completely strongest unit in terms of the stats. 
but I can promise you it is. So guys, these are such a strong unit and don't they look fantastic again. Not heavily armored, not heavily armored, but they have that rum fire, uh, that rum fire sword that is a beastly, beastly weapon that is going to do so much damage to the enemy. And this is why. So 13 morale. Not a huge amount of morale for this unit. And it is a light infantry unit. So please bear in mind, you know, that it is light infantry. It's classed as light infantry, not classed as heavy infantry. And that's why they don't have so much armor. But 16 melee attack. That's one of the highest melee attacks we've seen for a non-phalangite unit. And that is, of course, because of the on fire. A very, very nice sword that they've got going on there as well. But 14 missile attack with two javis as well for that extra shock element. And 28 defense, only 10 of which is against missiles, so they will die to javelins quite quickly. And 18 defense skill, 14 charge as well is fantastic for a light infantry unit. Very nice indeed. But this is the real stat that you want to look, like, look at. Armor piercing secondary weapon. When it's referring to javelin wielding units, guys, the javelin like legionaries, for example, in Rome Total War, that means that their sword is armor piercing, not their javelin. So that sword is an armor piercing sword with 16 melee attack. So that means if they have, you know, um, say 10 armor, zero shield, and 10 defense skill, they'll kill them in two hits because they'll completely go through the armor with the sword and do an extra six damage on that. And then it'll just be a second hit. So you can see how powerful these guys are going to be. You know, they've got to, you know, they reduce one of those defense uh, defense um, sort of uh, variants there and remove that so they only have to break through the shield and the defense skill to kill them. And on top of that, they have a really high attack of 16. So these guys are going to be absolutely beastly. And on top of that, like we saw last time, they frighten nearby enemy infantry that we saw with Massalia when we fought these guys. They pretty much just routed some of my elite units straight away. They are that strong. I promise you guys, these are the boys you want in your army. And look how mean they look as well. They look ready to go. And that sword is a scary, scary prospect for any enemy uh, units coming over the hill. A fantastic unit. But we are graced by the presence of absolute glorious greatness, uh, greatness here in terms of the Thracian infantry guard these are also light infantry so keep that in mind guys but look at them just look at them look how glorious these boys are they are absolutely beautiful 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 boyos look at the detail on these helms look at the capes once again and look at the you know the plumage and the, and the, the design on the helms they are fantastic but this is a truly Truly, truly great unit. This is probably one of the most exciting units we have seen so far. And if you can't tell, it's making me very excited right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, very, very, very good unit. Unbelievably good. And let's talk about the stats then. Why is this unit so good? 20 morale. That is general, infantry general standard morale. That is not routing until they're pretty much dead or they get completely surrounded and charged in the back. That is, you know, really unlikely to route at all. Melee attack of 19. And once again, they are using the wrong fire. So they have that a really, really strong melee attack that's also armor piercing. And it's a 19 melee attack. There's not many units, guys. With 19 uh, armor. So they are going to be cutting through the armor straight away. I can't even think of one that we've seen so far that had more than, you know, uh, 12 armor or something like that. If you're talking cataphracts, that's cataphract level of armor that these guys can cut through straight away. That is obscenely strong. That is obscene. And on top of that, they have the same defense. As a Hoplite unit, 36 defense, only 10 of which is defense against missiles, guys, because of that 3 shield and that 7 armor. So do be wary of that. And the defense skill of 26 with a charge, yes, a charge 
of 42. <laughs> 42. That is better than a Thessalian Lancer Cavalry, guys. This, this unit is obscenely good. That is one of the best units in the game. That has to be. That has to be. And the only, the only weakness I can see with these guys is Cavalry. You know, they don't wield, they don't wield, uh, they don't wield spears. But let's have a look in here. Bonus fighting cavalry. <laughs> These guys are so good. They do not have a weakness. The only weakness they probably have is elephants. And if you ever face these guys on the battlefield, just surround them or destroy them with missiles. That's probably actually their weakest part is the missile element. They can get destroyed by missiles quite quickly with only 10 missile defense. So if you do face them, don't join them in melee. Get your missile units to whittle them down first because this unit is unbelievably brutal, unbelievably strong, one of the best units in the whole game. And, you know, it just makes me so excited to see this unit, as you can tell. Right, on to some slightly different infantry. Not quite as elite, but we do have the Bithynian Theroperoi. So a solid unit, once again, but only a defense of 28 coming post-reform. And you can see, looking quite cool, looking very Greek in style again. So I love the sort of dichotomy between the Greek style and the Thracian styles. You can see these guys don't have the Thracian cloaks or anything. And they have pre predominantly uh, all Greek style helmets. I don't see any Bithynian helms in here. So they are a fully Greek unit. Standard Theroperoi, a little bit less defense than most of the Theroperoi units. So if you are going to use them, make sure, you know that you're using them appropriately and not against other Theroperoi. If I was, you know, if I was you, I would be mainly recruiting Romfoy or uh, Foroi and uh, Infantry Guard as my main units with Epibartai there as my missile slash, you know, um, yeah, slash, uh, you know, holding the line sort of units as well. So the Theroperoi, a fine unit, only six defense, however, against missiles. So they're going to die against missiles very quickly. 22 defense skill, which is great. 28 total defense, which is nowhere near as good as most other Theroperoi units. Most of the Theroperoi units are 34. So these guys are not going to stand up against other Theroperoi units. Morale of 13, 10 melee attack, and 13 missile attack. So, you know, I'd probably say these are one of your weaker units. So you don't really want to recruit them unless you have to. Try and fill out the armies, that sort of thing. They're definitely better than the uh, Thracian tribesmen. Uh, but you've got to choose between these and the Hoplites, and I'd take the Hoplites. But if not, I'm going to start taking the Romfeo Foroi, definitely. But we also have another Greek unit, but this one does. You know, this unit was uh, made in the Macedonian style, like we saw in the history of the roster. But they are Bithynian people. So we have Bithynian helms again. We have Greek style cloaks this time. You know, the different colors on the cloaks. And we have a bit of plumage. Not a huge amount of plumage. But these guys are a pretty nice unit as well. A pretty elite unit. And you can see lovely looking shields over here. Really nice. And again, a stunning, stunning unit. I love the clasp on the middle there. Very cool indeed. 18 morale, guys. Fantastic amount of morale. Total defense of 38. A melee attack of 13 and two jabbies with 16 missile attack, which is fantastic. So they've got 14 defense against missiles, so they're not going to die against missiles very, very much. With a defense skill of 24. A really, really good and a very elite unit. You know, if it wasn't for the infantry guard. I'd be so excited about these guys. But the infantry guard, you know, that unit is something else. But these guys are a very strong elite infantry unit. With a sword as well, remember. So that 13 melee attack is going to be a lot better than a 13 melee attack for a spear unit. So always remember that when you're using sword wielding, wielding units. Although the melee attack might not look as good as some spear wielding units. It generally is better if it's close. So, a really nice elite unit. You know, if I was putting a roster of these together in terms of the infantry, I'd probably be taking the Apibartai once I've got the reforms. I'd probably take four, five, or six of these guys as our missile options. I'd probably look if, you know, if you had everything, uh, everything able to be recruited, I'd probably look at taking about, you know, six of the Royal Peltasts 
And then the rest of the infantry as Romfeo Foroy, or if you've got them unlocked, the infantry guard as your flanking forces. Because on the flank, remember, these guys have bonus against cavalry as well, which is just crazy. I'm not sure the... Um, yeah, the Romfoil 4 I don't, so that is probably a weakness for them. But the Infantry Guard have a bonus against Cavalry as well, which is just obscene. So this roster, you can see, is just brutal. It's so good. It's so strong. So strong. So, let's have a look at our General. First of all, we have the Thracian Royal Bodyguards. And it is finally nice to see an Asian Bodyguard done up into its full glory over here look at these boys looking stunning and unmistakably thracian as well rather than looking greek very very cool indeed we've got plumage we've got capage we know that these guys are a strong unit and you can see the charge is not as good as the infantry guard there that just shows you how strong they are once again but 18 morale 14 melee attack and 12 missile attack with uh, 6 or 7 javis. 7 javis, I believe. Um, and remember, these guys are armor-piercing with that secondary weapon as well. Armor-piercing with the spear. So that 33 charge plus 14 melee attack will be an armor-piercing charge, guys. That's obscene. They are These guys are going to kill so many men on the charge. They are going to be fantastic. And you can see they have decent defense as well. 31 defense, 9 armor, 6 shield. So 15 defense against missiles and 16 defense skill. If anything, you know, I wouldn't leave these guys in, in, um, in extended melee because of the spear. But it's an armor piercing spear. So <laughs> they'll be fine. These guys are, are really, really good. A very nice unit indeed. So let's have a look at our Thracian Light Lancers. And you can see these guys have been uh, updated as well. Looking very cool. So you're really light cavalry option. Very, very light. And I love the look of these boys. We've got the pajama sort of pattern on there. Uh, like we see with Parthia and Vanilla. Very cool. Um, but these boys really light cavalry. Really, really light. 13 morale, which is fine. 11 melee attack with a charge of 28. So they're kind of... You know, like a better version of the Prodromoy in melee. Total defense, though, is not good. 15 defense, only 3 armor. So these guys will get whittled down by missiles very quickly. And a defense skill of 12. So, you know, you'll really, really like cavalry. They'll be very fast. Good at uh, running down uh, enemy, uh, you know, routing troops. But in terms of the strength of them, they're not going to be strong in extended melee or against other cavalry. So you've got to use them to dip in and out with the charge constantly. Right, let's have a look at the Bithynian cavalry. Again, another unique unit. And we've got these huge bronze Aspis shields here that look really cool. Really, really cool. They are massive as well. Almost like a Chalcospedes shield, but double the size. Very, very cool indeed. And these guys, again, have the Bithynian helmets, but we've got the sort of Linothorax of Greece in there as well. So more sort of Linothoraces in here rather than um, some of the more Thracian armor or the uh, sort of bronze breastplates. So looking really cool. A nice hybrid between Greece and Thrace once again. But let's have a look at the Bithynian cavalry stats. 25 defense, 15 morale, 10 melee attack with a missile attack of 10 and 7 javis. So these guys act as a fantastic hybrid unit. A really good hybrid unit. With total defense, you know, of 25. 14 of which is against missiles. But that defense skill is not good. So they won't do well in cavalry versus cavalry fights, guys. Because they've got low melee attack and low defense skill. However, they will do really well on the charge. That 28 charge. And the 15 morale as well is really nice. They're going to do well on the charge. And just to mix it in, you've got the Javis as well. So overall, I think in a battle, these guys might do more damage than a purely melee unit that does more because of those Javis. So you've just got to balance that. Do you want this unit that's going to fire Javis first? Or do you want a purely melee focused cavalry? So you've got to just choose between those two different options. We've also got our Bithynian Noble Cavalry, but we'll cover them in a second. And we have our Bithynian Theroperoi Cavalry over here. 
quite a light cavalry, as we can see. And these guys are, uh, you know, standard Theroperoi cavalry. Looking quite cool. I like the uh, Thurios shields over there. Very nice. We've got uh, Shia LaBeouf on there once again. Looking cool. And, uh, yeah, it's a... Um, Nice looking unit. Nice unit. So it's a standard unit in terms of what it is compared to the Thracian Light light Lancers. You can see it's better in melee than them. But on top of that, it includes the 9 missile attack of 7 Javis to throw into the enemy as well. So if you're going to get this or the uh, Bithynian... Uh, sorry, the uh, Thracian Light Lancers, you're going to choose this every time. 17 defense, 9 of which is uh, defense against missiles, and only 8 defense skills. So again, these guys are going to do terrible in cav-on-cav -cav fights. But a nice little Javi Cavalry unit. If you like Javi Cavalry, this is the unit for you. And now we have our Hippa Contisti. And I believe these guys might be post-reform. Um, but yeah. Let me know in the comments. I, I think these guys might be pre-reform currently, but we shall see. As I say, a lot of the reforms are going to be changing and balancing and seeing which units you work best for post-reform and pre-reform as well as we're going forward. So these guys, um, you know, very, very light cavalry, 16 defense, 9 defense against missiles, which is quite nice because they will be predominantly an anti-Javi cav cavalry with 9 morale. 8 melee attack and 9 missile attack. No, I think that, yeah, these guys are pre-reform. Um, so, yeah, a, a mainly javelin cavalry. These guys, you know, not quite as bad as the Prodromoi, but they're pretty close to being as bad as the Prodromoi because they've got less charge than the Prodromoi does. So I'd say they're probably even worse than the Prodromoi. So although they look really cool indeed, probably one of your weak cavalry units that you don't really want to get too much action out of instead get something like the bithynian cavalry instead so on to your elite boys your bithynian noble cavalry and let's just take a second to look at that how good do these boys look they look stunning they look stunning once again i love these shields i absolutely love them really really cool designs on these it really pops it really makes the unit pop and they've all got their their capage they've got bithynian helms once again that we can see as well as a bit of plumage going on as well that's how you know these boys are truly truly elite wearing greek armor once again but a lot of bronze in there to really make them pop looking really cool i love this unit and we can see 16 morale which is really nice one thing to note, guys, they are fast moving for a heavy cavalry unit, which is fantastic because most heavy cavalry units in this mod are really slow. So getting these guys, you know, fast moving on there means they're going to be able to maneuver with the light cavalry and keep up with them, which is really cool. 11 uh, melee attack, which isn't fantastic, but 34 charge with that 11 melee attack is going to do a lot of damage. 27 defense. Um, 15 of which is against missiles, so a really good defense, and 12 defense skills. So again, not a huge amount of defense skill. So in terms of ca your cavalry, you don't have a lot of anti-cav cavalry options, apart from your general, of course. Um, the Bithynian cavalry are quite nice as an anti-cav, you know, javelin unit. So you've got a lot of anti-cav javelin units, but not quite as much anti-cav cavalry, if that makes sense. Melee cavalry. But a very nice unit nonetheless, and a really elite unit. Stats are, are about in line with the uh, the Sacred Band of Carthage. So, yeah, you've got a really strong melee cavalry unit there. Very nice. This roster truly is just glorious. I, I absolutely love it, if you couldn't tell. It is fantastic. It is a strong, strong roster. But we are going to be going up against... Uh, we are going to be going up against the Odrissians now, which is a really, also really strong unit roster. So let's get going. If you have enjoyed the video, guys, and you don't want to see the battle, that's absolutely fine. Just uh, leave a like. That would be fantastic. Um, and a subscribe as well would be awesome. So let's come forward. We've got so much Javi and Missile Cavalry. They do as well, though. That's one thing to remember. And here come the Thracian tribesmen going ham straight at us. They have the Agranian Infantry as well. So we should hopefully get a few Javis off right now. Here comes their Peltas. We've got to be careful of their 
you know, their cavalry as well. They've got also they've got also got noble cavalry. So let's get these boys forward. And you can see the Bithynian noble cavalry. The reason why they're behind these guys is because both of these guys, I believe, are fast moving. Yes, they are. So you've got to remember a light a light cavalry that's fast moving is going to be faster moving than a heavy cavalry that's fast moving. Um, but the Thracian Peltas have already gone ham. They've already gone in into the fight. And you can see the infantry is just breaking. I've not been paying attention at all because I've just been gloriously looking at all the units. But let's come forward. Let's bring our our guard forward. And let's see whether we can charge his Romphophori. And we'll get our Romphophori in there as well. Charge the Noble Cavalry. That's a really nice unit. In terms of the cavalry over this side. They've got a lot of cavalry we've got to be careful of. What is that? Royal Warriors are a very nice unit. So we're going to just come out for a second. And we're going to bring our infantry forward. Sorry, this is, going to be a, this is going to be a messy battle right now. But you can see how powerful these guys are in terms of their charge. They're just going to get rid of... They're just going to vaporize enemy units. The enemy units are going to be so scared. I think we're going to win this quite easily. Let's watch them charge anyway. Come on, boys. Into the archers. They're already wavering. They've not even taken melee yet. They're, oh, there, there they go. They've run. You can see. Let's go after the run for Foroy. If we can get these boys in the fight as well. I don't know what's going on over here. But let's see if we can get rid of the Adrissian skirmisher cavalry. Nice and quickly. And over here, they have some Paeonian cavalry in their bodyguard as well. So, we've got our Hoplites in the fight against the Royal Warriors. That's going to be a bit scary. The Royal Warriors, of course, are going to be a good unit. Uh, but, yeah, let's get into... Uh, I mean, you can fight them if you want. But, you know, we've already just shredded half the army. Guys, get forward. Right, let's uh, let's charge the run for four, right? And let's watch the glorious charge of the infantry guard. What a unit. What a fantastic fantastic unit indeed and let's uh, see whether we can come up here here they come here they come 42 charge on those boys but the run for four rate of the thracian infantry is also really good like you can see look at them they just one or two hits and they're just killing them they are shredding them look how much they're shredding this unit really really nice what a unit what a fantastic unit Oh, I, I just can't stop waxing lyrical about that unit. Let's charge into the back of the enemy. Let's actually use some tactics rather than just relying on those boys and watching them. <laughs> Which is what we've been doing so far. I don't know what this unit's doing. It's coming back, I guess. Um, if we can get rid of those Royal Warriors, that would be nice. They're a good unit. They're a really nice unit for them. Uh, so we've got them. Let's come up. Let's get our Run for Foray and Infantry Guard up here as well. We might need them to uh, charge into the back of the Royal Warriors across here. And uh, yeah, they've uh, they've gone. Very, very cool. What a unit roster, honestly. What a fantastic, what a strong, strong, strong unit roster. Really glorious. Really glorious. This is probably one of the occasions where me saying glorious is actually appropriate, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. So exciting. So, so exciting. Uh, what do we have over here? We've got these uh, these guys. They can go and deal with the Thracian Slingers. This cavalry can come and deal with them as well. These uh, Royal Warriors now should be wavering. Yeah, because we've got our Infantry Guard. Now, let's watch the charge of the Infantry Guard once again. Here they come. Let's see the damage that they do. I love the purple on these Adrissian units, by the way. Really nice. Some of the crazy guys at the front just charging in. Nice. And that's just instantly broken them. What a glorious unit roster this is. Oh. Oh. It is fantastic. It is so, so good. So good. So good. Oh, glorious, 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 glorious. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love it so much. I know I keep saying it, but what a unit roster. If you like strong, armor-piercing, heavy infantry units... Well, they're not even heavy infantry. They're light infantry. If you like them, then this is the unit roster for you. Who is left over? Oh, the Royal Guard have come back. Don't come back, bro. Let's get our Royal, uh, get our, uh, royal Cavalry. They've not even taken any fighting yet. 
And let's charge him into the Royal Warriors. Oh, look at that. Glorious charge. There we are. Fantastic. <laughs> We shredded Adrissia, and I wasn't even paying attention for most of that battle. I was just waxing lyrical about how good the infantry guard are. Oh my god. But look at the run for four, 106 kills. Very nice indeed. What a glorious, 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 glorious unit roster. I love it, and I hope you do too. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, please consider giving it a like. Please consider subscribing. That would be really really nice and a cinematic um you know overview of this roster will come out the day after this one is released so if you're not checked that out do check that out as well well thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you all again on the next video